Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channels Television, coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. NCDC announces 16 confirmed new cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria as the federal government asks for cooperation of Nigerians in the effort to curb the spread of the pandemic, says the nation is at war with an unseen enemy. National Assembly leadership faults implementation of the social investment program by the federal government as it meets with the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs over the conditional cash transfer. At least five persons reportedly killed following attempts by police and members of the civilian joint task force to enforce the lockdown order in Kaduna South local government area. And the city of New York in the U.S. reports highest COVID-19 deaths in a single day as total figure for the country hits over 11,000. Plus, we'll have business, sports news from Abuja, the FCT, and later on international news from our London studios. Our website, channelstv.com, has more information on our top stories and others. Do subscribe and watch Channels Television's live stream on YouTube and other social media platforms using your mobile device browser. Or you can download the Channels TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. You can also watch us via your smart TV platforms on Apple, Android TV, Fire and Roku TV as well. Things have taken a violent turn in Kaduna State, resulting in the killing of at least five people after police operatives and members of the Civilian Joint Task Force attempted to disperse traders who defied a lockdown order in Kakuri and Trikania areas. Some youths from Kaduna South local government area have been protesting the killings, which our correspondent gathered occurred when a fight broke out between the JTF members and the traders. The local vigilante group had attempted to disperse the traders who converged on a temporary market in the Trikania following the close of the market on Monday. According to the spokesperson of the Kaduna State Police Command, Mohamed Jalige, rather than return to their various homes after they were initially dispersed by the police in Kakuri, the traders moved to Trikania to continue their businesses. He said the traders later engaged in a bloody clash with the civilian JTF members who had attempted to chase them from the market. Let's talk about these developments around defiance of the lockdown order. Joining me live is a security consultant, Mr. Kabiru Adamu. Thanks a lot for joining us on the News at 10. Now, good evening. Thank you for having me. Now, we heard from the presidential task force, at least in Lagos today, uh, and we heard the FGF talk about the country being at war with an unseen enemy. Is this how serious you think Nigerians need to take this order to stay at home? Yes, um, given the uh, ravaging effect of COVID-19, as we've seen it across the world, um, like you said in your you know, remarks, in New York, uh, in Spain, in Italy, we're talking of almost a thousand deaths per day in, in those places. So yes, this is an enemy that needs to be taken seriously. And the lockdown um, for now, um, in addition with social distancing and other hygiene practices, are the only mechanisms that the world know how to deal with this pandemic. There is no known cure at the end or vaccine for it. So these um, me measures announced by government are the only measures and we need to take them seriously. Yeah, we've seen about five people reportedly killed in Kaduna State, and the issue was enforcement. What is the best approach security agencies need to adopt while passing across this message of staying home? Because in, the whole idea is not to lose life through COVID or brute force, on the, other, on the other hand. So in your experience, what should be the best way we can go about it so that we don't have a death toll on the other hand? So in, in the first place, the security component of the presidential um, tax force on COVID-19, um, I hope that by, they've done their risk assessment so they know the potential hotspots. The area where we discussed Tilkania in Kaduna is a known hotspot for gang uh, violence and gang activities. And this time, gangs and groups that unfortunately have a history revolt when it comes to government policies should have been documented and those hotspots identified. The second component is risk communication. After you've done your assessment, how do you communicate this um, policy to these groups 
the way you and I and other, um, it, well, quote and unquote, educated persons will understand this communication is very different from the way these groups will understand that communication. Likewise, women, likewise, children, likewise, other um, groups, especially in the rural environment. So, what types of communication were done for this particular, um, you know, group? And then for the security operatives in the field, I am very worried that till today, um, and perhaps um, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't had. Uh, a standard operating procedure that has been uh, developed for the involvement of especially the military and in addition the police which is the lead agency in this type of civil um, you know op operation that I think is an error there should have been a, um, a standard operating procedure a rules of engagement that would spell clearly the civility with which this function needs to be carried out because um, Nigerians are suffering at the moment they don't need brute force what we need is a civil authority that is able to communicate in a polite and nice manner. I had the president of South Africa when he was briefing the military team that was deployed. That was the, the focus. He emphasized the point around civility, around handling the civil public with the kind of um, you know, uh, civility that would allow them to understand that look, these are difficult times, so you have to do this. So I think this is what is missing, a standard operating procedure that is um, civil and that would help Nigerians um, in compliance with this policy uh, that are in place at the moment. All right, security consultant, Mr. Kabiru Adamu, thanks a lot for joining us on the News at 10 tonight. Thank you for having me. Let's cross over to Abuja now, and here's Ibrahim Adra. Ibrahim. Hi, Joma. Now, more COVID-19 isolation centers are being opened here in the federal capital territory, with the latest at the Asokoro General Hospital, which is ready to admit any coronavirus patient as from Friday, April the 10th. According to the FCT Minister, Milo Mohamed Bello, the identified facilities can accommodate at least 500 bed spaces. The minister also appeals to residents of the nation's capital to obey the president's lockdown directive in order to curtail the spread of the virus. And as part of efforts to arrest the spread of coronavirus, the federal government has commissioned the first Made in Nigeria Ventilators and Safety Tunnels manufactured by the National Agency for Science, Engineering and Infrastructure, NASENI. At the commissioning ceremony in Abuja, the Minister of State for Science and Technology explained that the federal government remains committed to ending the scourge of COVID-19. Efforts towards curbing the spread of the coronavirus in the country appear to be in top gear as the federal government commissions safety tunnels, ventilators and vehicle disinfectants in the nation's capital. Thank you. Thank you. These safety tunnels and ventilators manufactured by the National Agency for Science, Engineering and Infrastructure, NASANI, are specially produced to combat the spread of COVID-19. The Minister of State for Science and Technology inspects the equipment, which are the first to be manufactured in Nigeria. With inspection over, the minister commends Nasani for taking the lead in manufacturing equipment. I am very glad on behalf of the minister, uh, Dr. Bona Aonu, to congratulate Nasani for the manufacture of these prototype uh, ventilators, which I understand they are mobile. This has in no small way improved Nigeria's capacity to contain um, this virus that is plaguing every nation. Uh, we are going to interface with relevant um, agencies of government and ministries to ensure that Nasani is empowered to manufacture this in large quantities for distribution to our various hospitals. The, the executive vice chairman and chief executive of Nasani explains the importance of the products and offers assurances of the agency's preparedness for mass production based on request. Everything was designed afresh. We calm people uh, throughout the periods of the lockdown. In fact, before then, people have spent nine days in a camp in one of our institutes in Mina to bring all the uh, models we need, design, we share ideas, we look for availability of materials and produce what is practicable. 
The ravaging impact of coronavirus is a major source of concern globally, and these first made in Nigeria ventilators and safety tunnels are no doubt a boost in the fight against COVID-19. Now in northwest Nigeria, the Kano state governor, Abdullahi Ganduje, believes that with donations by philanthropists, intervention by federal government, and the level of preparedness against COVID-19, the state will continue to be coronavirus free. Governor Ganduja also announced an extension of the state home order for civil servants while asking residents to continue to observe social distancing and other restrictions. Here's Channel's television correspondent Idris Jibrin. Sani Abacha Stadium in Kanu is the most popular football arena in northern Nigeria. The stadium will be contributing its own quota to end the spread of COVID-19 in Nigeria and will for now be known as the Kano State COVID-19 Isolation Center. As set up, Katsi Chairman of the Dongote Group, Alhaji Ali Dongote. Kano State Governor Abdullahi Ganduje is here to inspect work on the 500-bed isolation and treatment center. I'm sitting on this bed not because I am a sick person. I am COVID-19 negative. While no case is reported or suspected in Kano states, Governor Ganduje wants to be battle ready for any eventuality. We have closed all our 11 borders going into Kano and going out of Kano to make sure that People are prevented from coming in into Kano. Back at the government house, the state fundraising committee give its reports. Even with all the preparations, the ultimate desire of the Ganduji administration is that Kano state remains free of COVID-19, which is why it's directing civil servants to remain at home for the next two weeks with a call on all residents to adhere to the social distancing rule. We're extending it to another two weeks because we are still, the country is still in danger. Get daily infections. This committee is also set to commence distribution of relief materials as part of government palliative measures for the stay at home period. Kano State now has six isolation centers across the state, and volunteer healthcare personnel are being recruited to man the centers. Idris Jubrin, Channels Television News. Many thanks, Idris. Still to come on the news at 10, International Monetary Fund says it is considering Nigeria's request for funds to counter the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on Africa's biggest economy. That's on business news. Join us again.